Last week, the Linux kernel maintainers got to have quite a bit of fun, all caused by this patch right here, which if you look at the patch, it's a seemingly innocent patch. There's a bit of a back and forth about it, discussing whether the patch is actually working, whether it's something that's actually needing to be done, but Greg Hartman wanted absolutely nothing to do with this patch because he realized what was actually going on here. As he says in his reply, if you look at the code, this is impossible to happen, referring to the fix that's actually being made. Please stop submitting known invalid patches. Your professor is playing around with the review process in order to achieve a paper in some strange and bizarre way. This is not okay. It is wasting our time and we'll have to report this again to your university because this wasn't just an innocent patch. What this was was a patch that's a part of some research being done by the University of Minnesota and you can go and read the paper on this research right here. And it's titled on the feasibility of stealthily introducing vulnerabilities in open source software via hypocrite commits. And when Greg pointed this out, as you can probably expect, this really annoyed the other maintainers. Before we get into the responses in the email thread, let's have a look at the experiment itself just to make sure that what the experiment actually consisted of was actually a big deal rather than just being a massive nothing burger. So after all of this controversy went down, the authors of the paper released an FAQ answering some of the common questions that were being made. So let's go down to the experiment section so what they did is employed a static analysis tool to identify three immature vulnerabilities inside of the Linux kernel. A static analysis tool basically looks at the code and then tries to work out if there's some sort of bug in that code. And an immature vulnerability is basically a vulnerability that could potentially exist inside of the source code, but the thing to actually trigger the vulnerability is currently missing. So let's say you have a buffer overflow vulnerability, but there's no way to actually trigger the buffer overflow, this would be an immature vulnerability. Along with this, they also identified three minor bugs that actually did exist inside a Linux kernel that should actually be patched. So what they did was constructed three incorrect or incomplete minor patches to actually fix the three bugs, and these minor patches introduced the conditions to actually make the immature vulnerability into an actual vulnerability along with making proper patches for these bugs at the same time. So they would send these incorrect patches through to the Linux community via email, and once they got the all good from the maintainer, they would then go and point out the new bug that was introduced, and then provide the proper patch to actually deal with that bug. So this should lead to the new vulnerability only staying within the Linux email exchanges, rather than actually making their way into the stable branch of the Linux kernel. But... Even though in this FAQ they do claim that none of the vulnerabilities they made actually did make it into the stable version of the Linux kernel, that may not be 100% accurate. So there are two cases right here where some of those patches actually may have made their way through. I cannot confirm whether these patches were actually a part of the research, and I'll get into that in just a bit, but there are some broken patches that definitely did make their way through. Now, this experiment didn't lead to a ton of patches being made, only about nine or so, but more than zero fake patches is more patches than anyone should have to actually deal with. So, regardless what actually happened, this was going to waste some time. But, we have a bigger problem. We don't know what patches need to be re-reviewed because it's unclear what patches were actually made in bad faith. Because for some reason, the authors of the paper decided to obfuscate the source code of the patches. So what's going to happen instead is that Greg Hartman decided that every single one of the patches being made by the authors of the paper has to be re-reviewed. So rather than having nine things that need to be done, 190 patches need to be re-reviewed. And that's just the easy ones that can be handled automatically. There are 68 other patches that require manual review. And some of these patches go all the way back to 2018. Now, the research being done only happened within the past year, but we don't know if there was another research paper prior to this, or maybe these people made some other malicious commits. So every single thing they've ever submitted to the kernel needs to be checked over. 
And ultimately, that is the safest way to handle it. Now, this is titled Reversion of All the UMN EDU Commits, but it's not actually going to be reverting everything. So, initially, Greg did want to actually get rid of every single patch made by this university. Some people then pointed out that some of the patches actually did address real bugs with the kernel, so things like that sort of had to be kept around. Now, a couple of people in the thread asked how something like this even managed to happen, and a couple of things sort of came together to make it possible. One of those is that if you see a university email, you're going to assume that it's someone trying to do something positive for the Linux kernel. In this case, testing out a new static analyzer tool, you're going to assume that what it's producing actually makes sense. The other thing is that up until this point, Everyone submitting to the Linux kernel, obviously, unless you have, like, a history of submitting bad patches, is assumed to be helping out the kernel, rather than actually submitting malicious code. I don't know how they managed to get to this point still thinking that. Honestly, they should have assumed that everyone submitting a patch is trying to do something malicious, and something like this would be far less likely to actually happen. Throughout this original thread, there is some discussion of whether this is a form of unethical human experimentation. This research was approved by the University of Minnesota's Institutional Review Board, but that doesn't mean that some of the concerns aren't actually valid. One of those concerns being that this research was specifically designed to mislead the reviewers into accepting faulty patches, leading to wasted time developing the kernel, because of the extra reviews that needed to be done. Now, I am no expert in this subject, but some people in the thread believe that the Minnesota Review Board is inexperienced when it comes to human experimentation in computer science research. And the authors did address this in the FAQ, and their response is bizarre to say the least. So as they say, this is not considered human research. This project studies some issues with the patching process instead of individual human behaviors, and we did not collect any personal information. Now, I don't know what not collecting personal information has to do with this. No one is claiming this is a privacy violation. And even if you did collect personal information, if that information came from the Linux mailing list, all of the information is public anyway. And the rest of this just basically explains that they did get this reviewed by the Institutional Review Board. They didn't get it done before they actually started the experiment, but after the experiment was actually done, the Review Board did actually approve it. Even if they did approve it, that doesn't necessarily mean that the experiment wasn't human research, all it means is that this Institutional Review Board doesn't believe it was. Now, Shalat Abi did suggest to Greg Harvin, if this is such an issue, it can be escalated with the university, and someone else pointed this out over on Twitter as well, and over there he gave a great response. What he basically said is, why is that my job to do so, I have enough real work to do, and you know what? I can completely respect that position. So rather than dealing with this university and their review board, they decided to take a more, how you say, direct approach. What they basically did is, our community welcomes developers who wish to help and enhance Linux. That is not what you're attempting to do here, so please do not try to frame it that way. Our community does not appreciate being experimented on and being tested by submitting known patches that either do nothing on purpose or introduce bugs on purpose. If you wish to work like this, I suggest you find a different community to run your experiments on. You are not welcome here. Because of this, I will now have to ban all future contributions from your university and rip out your previous contributions as they were obviously submitted in bad faith with the intent to cause problems. Now, this was posted by before he said that they were just going to review them, so take this last bit with a grain of salt. Now this ban might seem extreme because not everyone at the university was actually involved in the research, but a ban like this can always be reversed in the future if they deem it necessary to do so. However, even though there is a university-wide ban, that doesn't mean that they'll never actually accept patches from someone with a UMN email. So as is said by Greg here, we will have a default reject unless otherwise determined to actually be a valid fix, i.e. they provide proof and can verify that it actually fixes a real bug. Does this raise the bar for actually submitting to the Linux kernel? Yes, it does. But because of what was done here, 
they needed to have some way of actually verifying that some future research wasn't being done or that some other malicious actor wasn't actually trying to get some code into the kernel. I think my favorite part of all this is the suggestions for improvement inside of the FAQ because these are all good suggestions, but you didn't exactly need to cut ties with the University of Minnesota and the Linux kernel come up with them. Open source software projects would be suggested to update the code of conduct with something like, by submitting the patch, I agree to not intend to introduce bugs. What a 2000 IQ idea. Make it so you tell people not to do bad things. Wow. We need automated tools for testing and verifying patches. Who would ever thought? Open source software maintaining is understaffed. Thank you, TED Talk. And we hope both reporters and maintainers are aware of the potential bug introducing patches. Also, tools can be developed to check immature vulnerabilities. What a crazy revelation. That's, that's your suggestions. That's your suggestion you get from cutting ties with these two organizations. Because of how much outrage was caused, the university did have to respond to this, and their statement is pretty basic, nothing really that crazy. Leadership in the University of Minnesota Department of Computer Science and Engineering learned today about the details of research being conducted by one of its faculty members and graduate students into the security of the Linux kernel. The research method used raised serious concerns in the Linux kernel community and as of today, this has resulted in the university being banned from contributing to the Linux kernel. And this was about six days ago. We take this situation extremely seriously. We have immediately suspended this line of research and will investigate the research method and the process process by which the research was approved, determine appropriate remedial action, and safeguard against future issues if needed, we will report our findings back to the community as soon as practical. And yeah, there's nothing really to say about that, and I wouldn't be surprised if the university also somewhere down the line gave a fairly large donation to the Linux Foundation. Now, initially Linus Torvalds didn't actually respond, but a few days ago he finally did, and what he said is nothing that hasn't already been said before. I don't really know what to say, speaking about the ban itself. I think the email thread is likely the most relevant information. I don't think it has been a huge deal technically, but people are pissed off, and it's obviously a breach of trust, which fairly sums up the situation. And then to cap all of this off, the authors of the paper submitted this open letter to the Linux community, basically apologizing for everything that's transpired. So we sincerely apologize for any harm our research group did to the Linux kernel community. Our goal was to identify issues with the patching process and ways to address them. And we are very sorry that the method used in the hypocrite commits paper was inappropriate. And they go through and explain basically everything that was done that the 190 patches that were being reviewed weren't actually part of the hypocrite commits paper. However, some of them did actually introduce real bugs, which isn't actually mentioned here. And then they explain that they are a group that is devoted to actually helping the kernel and basically ended off by trying to bring themselves back into being able to submit code to the kernel. And Greg responds to this by basically saying, Thank you for your response. As you know, the Linux Foundation and the Linux Foundation's Technical Advisory Board submitted a letter on Friday to your university outlining the specific actions which need to happen in order for your group and your university to be able to work to regain the trust of the Linux kernel community. Until those actions are taken, we do not have anything further to discuss about this issue. Thanks, Greg KH. And that is basically the end of the situation. Now, if in the future, the University of Minnesota is actually allowed to submit patches back to the Linux kernel again, I will probably do a follow-up then, but for now, that's where the story ends. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think about this whole situation. Do you think the research was unethical or was it completely valid? Do you think the response from the Linux maintainers was valid or was it too far? Let me know what you think about it. So I think that's going to be everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, uh, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and...